Up, yo hutch. Anjek, I wish ka chikhatsi. Good afternoon, relatives, family, friends. It's hard to believe that we are here in this part of our journey. This is a spiritual journey for the National Congress of American Indians that didn't begin just 20 years ago. It began with time. We all knew our relatives, our ancestors, they foretold of a time as this, when we would be confronted with so much in this world, they knew that there would be a day of reckoning. And our generation is that generation that's been prepared for centuries to confront and address the challenges that are facing not just Native people, but all of humanity. You see, our ancestors foretold of a time when the world as it exists, the way we see it today, is not sustainable. And they knew that we as Native people, as long as we listen to our ancestors, and as long as we are true to our teachings, and as long as we continued in prayer and ceremony to call upon the strength of our ancestors, the guidance and wisdom of our Creator, there was no period of time for which we would not be prepared and able to confront. So when you look at the world around us, we know that there's a great deal of division. There's a great deal of fear, doubt, and uncertainty in every aspect of our life and existence. And our ancestors foretold of a time that we are witnessing right now. But they also foretold of a time in which we would come together and unite as that guiding light for the rest of the world that is sick, that is confused, and that is lost. And 20 years ago, the National Congress of American Indians came together to form the Sovereignty Protection Initiative. Tribal leaders were in Washington, D.C. during 9-11, and I happened to be there as a young attorney. And we were under attack. We found ourselves in a, a war zone with the attacks in New York City and just miles from where we were at the Pentagon. On the one year anniversary of 9-11, we left my home nation at Quinault and ran the width of the United States to arrive on the front steps of the United States Supreme Court the first Monday in October to announce to the world that our tribal sovereignty was not for sale that no matter the attacks on our tribal sovereignty, it is non-negotiable. And it is an attribute that we carry from when time began until the end of time. And so you see, when we set out on October 3rd, that was a date in which the United States Supreme Court opened this year's term. And for those of you that are paying attention to what the United States Supreme Court has done this last year, our tribal sovereignty is once again under direct attack. And so you see, every generation faces these battles, but every generation is prepared. And I often say, while we experience multi-generational pain and trauma, we also carry with us multi-generational strength, knowledge, and wisdom. It is within our DNA and it is non-negotiable and nothing can separate us. No decision out of the court, no decision out of the United States Congress can take that away from us. It is gifted to us from when time began. And in just a matter of days, on November 9th, the United States Supreme Court is going to be hearing a case on the constitutionality of the Indian Child Welfare Act. So we knew at the beginning of this year that we are going to have to do another run to commemorate the 20 year anniversary, but to once again stand strong and unite all of Indian country in defense of tribal sovereignty. And I wanna say here today now, thank you. Thank each and every one of you for coming out today to stand with us to say tribal sovereignty is alive and it is well, and it is gonna be here not only from the beginning of time, but to the end of time, as long as each and every one of us are taking a breath as long as each and every one of us can pass
pass those teachings to our youngest as long as each and every one of us can sit with our elders and sit in prayer with our almighty creator we are going to endure and we're not only going to endure for us but the survival of all of humanity so on behalf of the national congress of american indians i cannot thank you enough you could be anywhere today it says it is it saturday it is saturday sunday <laughs> We've been, we've been on the road since uh, October 3rd. I don't even know what day it is, but I know it's a good day. And I know that we are here together. And so you could be anywhere on a Sunday, but you chose to be here to stand with us. And as we stand to unite all of Indian country, we are not only uniting our nations, we are uniting the ancestors. We are uniting generations yet to be born. And we are feeling the power and the strength when Indian country comes together and they unite. So on this glorious day, on this campus, I can't thank you enough for being here. And so from the bottom of our hearts at the National Congress of American Indians, take this day, take this remembrance for each and every one of you as you live through this life, the paths that you cross, the people that you are gonna touch, Take this good medicine with you and pass it on to those that will be coming behind you. Because, and just looking at you young people here, your futures are so very bright. And you could be anywhere today, but you chose to be here with us. So on behalf of the National Congress of American Indians, we have been fighting and uniting and defending tribal sovereignty since 1944. And we are going to continue to do that for all generations to come.